Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this game, Team Bad English versus Ento of the yeah, Mount Herman Cha the Challenge, where we play Dota for the children. My name is Marity Claus, and I am joined today by my caster, um, Moist, or if you want to know him, hey, Zach Owen. How are you doing, man? Radiance Pig. Uh, I'm doing very good, and I'm pumped for the second game, my friend. How are you? I am doing fine. I am doing fine. So, let's have a look. Last game, Team Bad English. Ahead on net worth for most of the game and were able to, even though they had a few missed, missed, misplayed fights, I guess you would say, they were able to beat themselves back to the game thanks to a very good PL. <laughs> a very yeah, farm PL as well. Go. Do you think that strategy will change? Do you think, uh, what picks bands are you expecting this time? Well, Enzo have just pulled out the dream team right now. Ah, Wyvern yes. and Azul has a really, really uh, good Very pair of supports potent. right there. Very incredibly uh, potent set of heroes, especially together. Ex yeah, exactly. And banning up the AA is really smart right now because you got the Shadow Wave and the Cold Embrace. Yeah. AA will just negate all of your healing, and it's a really smart band coming out from then. From them and SF, Wisp, Huskar, they're just you know, typical bands Dance against higher, higher MMR players because, you know, they love playing Huskar in their pubs as well as the SF. Doom and Darkseer, we've seen them a lot at the Major and stuff like that. And teams often, you know, follow trends from the professionals. So I think it was um, a good call by them to ban them out. Radiance ban. Good point right there. And also the Alchemist being banned out right here as well. Alchemist is the hero to ban right now. Even though he was not banned last game. He wasn't picked either. It's a bit strange if you think about it, although you start thinking about it a bit more and you notice that would he really have fit into any of the team strats? Maybe not, but the ban from the AA sort of insists that they would like to pick up. Radiance pick. And banning the anti-mage, I think is actually a bad move for the simple reason they have Dazzle and Wyvern who are always wow are really good against the anti-mage. Like, both of them, you know, have really hard lockdown. Well, Wyvern has hard lockdown. And you got the minus armor coming out from the Dazzle, so... I'm not too sure. Like, there's a lot of ways to deal with anti-mage in this current meta. Ten seconds to go. I think they'll pick up the wind major here. You think maybe uh, it's yeah. just a comfort ban? Like, maybe they don't like playing against anti-mages? Yeah, that's a good point there. Reserve time. Ooh, good old knight. Big blue man. You know his axe. I'm thinking about it more and more. I fall in love with it every time I see it again. I just, it's, it's just such a lovely axe alt. I'm gonna say, axe upgrade yeah. really. Just the full walking vision. observer. <laughs> Put him a gem. He's a walking observer sentry combo. <laughs> yeah, but what's so amazing about him is you can negate, you know, the enemy vision. I think one of the. I prefer his old axe, axe upgrade though. Being the enemy. Anywhere around the map and just a small bit of area around them. But Tusk, you know, simple pick. Really strong magic damage and really good initiation there. I mean, what else do you want really? Um, he doesn't need much as well. I mean, he probably needs some things, but he doesn't need as much as other heroes, which is great. Oh, you always like to see an invoker, don't you? You around? Yep, I'm here. Yes, the invoker. Talk about the invoker for a second. Well, if it's a sweaty invoker, this is an easy game. We'll Even then, though, happens, I mean, man. bad English can, if they want to, to counter the Invoker. I mean, yeah, Silence is still in the pool. Yeah. Although Silence is the strongest of heroes at the moment. Maybe a Rubik pick. Reserve tag. Give him an axe, make him, make him steal everything. No, maybe just, you know, seeing the curse, seeing the grave, crippling fear, and mana, and um, dark, is it dark void? Void, it's just void. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of good ganking spells here that Rubik can take as well. I'm not too sure, but I think Rubik could be a good. 
a lot of stuff to steal here. Especially from the, not only from the Evoker, I mean just especially from the Invoker, but you know, like you said, nice stalk of Void Crippling Fear. Oh, well, they decide to pick up the PL again. Radiant I mean, they're comfortable with him, why not? And also, um, Yao, the Mana Burn from the Diffusal Blade does go through the Winter's Curse. That's something Dump to damage. bear. Bear in mind. It's, it's interesting, to go. because Winter Wyvern sort of counters the PL. Five seconds. Yeah, that's a good point here. Yeah, Bane's the one to ban out here. This is going to be a tough support uh, for Team Bad English. Um, Enzo are looking for their safe lane carry. Gyrocopter's in the pool. I think Gyrocopter's the way forward again here. Ten seconds to go. For Enzo, yeah, most likely. I mean, you saw he was almost Five able seconds. to take down the PL until PL popped the Satanic. Reserve time. Exactly, yeah. LC being banned out. LC's Radiant not too bad at all, actually, because you can clear out the illusions so easy. Well, it's the hard lockdown on the Slada, Queen of Pain, and the Tusk. LC was the wise de decision here, and they've got really good combo play with the Wyvern, too. And good setup for a Sunstrike if, in if Invoker did go the Exhort build, but we usually see the Wex Quas Quas Wex. Even Wex Exhort is not too bad. At the moment. Ten seconds to go. Exazort is a really weird build up though. Five seconds. Alacrity for days, my friend. Yes, but you, I mean you can use it on yourself, but usually if you go for like a more wex oriented build, you want to also have someone else you can use Alacrity on. I mean you can use it on the Night Stalker, but in most cases Night Stalker will not be the damage dealer. Like in the meta we're looking at at the moment. Um, nah, they can't pick a Wraith King here. Um, they haven't. Well, they've got the Sonic Wave and the Scream of Pain to deal with, um, like Chaos Knight. They make a Chaos Knight a big threat right now. Uh, who else is in the. Phantom Assassin is. Oh, Slark. Too bad. But I think that Gyrocopter or Juggernaut could be the way forward. A Juggernaut? Interesting proposition there. I mean, what yeah. do you expect them to do? Get a get a Battle Fury? Because, I mean, Spin for Win is great in the early game and it's okay in the mid game, but in the late game, you can't use that to kill off the illusions. I think Battle Fury into Maelstrom be quite strong here. But no, we forgot Fire about Zero. the pen, penultimate, the pinnacle of Phantom Lancer counters, the Ember Spirit, and also the pinnacle of Invoker counters, the Silencer. And the Ember Spirit. Yes. This is interesting. Final two picks being counter picks to each other. I'm guessing they thought, okay, maybe they're the strongest players. Maybe we just want to remove them from the game, but. Resulting two slots, there's just one whole slot for... I mean, it's okay. I mean, that's what a counter pick is, really. Purely on the basis of the draft, my money's on Team Bad English. Yeah. They've got early aggression. They've got really good team fight potential with the signs. Pain in the Tusk. We have $10 from Anonymous. To go. He did not leave a message. Not even leave a message, but thank you very much. Remember, all donations um, go to Save the Children. It's a really good course. And with that final message, we get into the game. So, you presented Team Bad English last time. Would you Nicole like to present Enzo? Okay, no, you'll have him again. <laughs> well, I can't pronounce the other team. Fine then, go for it. Okay, Quickly, before Poe. the smoke gank. Oh, Break smoke gank. Oh, I have to wait a minute. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be much, though. They're not really pursuing anything aggressively. Okay, go ahead. All right, we have Pwn on the Slada. We have Giga on the Tusk. We have Jed Rocks playing the PL. We have At the Speed of Life on the Queen of Pain. And we have Sciencer being picked up by Zenigata. Really swanky with the Sciencer. All right, and for 
Enzo Gaming, or just a Team Enzo. We have Muriel playing the Night Stalker. ILTW playing the Invoker. Um, six, I still need a Russian to help me pronounce that name, playing the Dazzle. Swanky playing the Winter Wyvern, and last but not least, we have Ur uh, playing the Amber Spirit. And as you can see, they have changed their names from last time. I assume these are their professional names. If Ur uh, is your professional name, you have to rethink that. Ur. Uh. Uh. <laughs> anyway, once again, an engagement on the bot lane. Once again, the Ice Shards will be the first things coming out here. And <laughs> the Bolas, Pone taking a lot of damage here. ILTW being saved by the Grave. In fact, they might even get a double kill here in return for one dying. They're in chains back up. And there you go. Oh, this will be get there. a two for one. You are no more. That's a double kill for your safe lane farmer as well, which is really good. Yeah, they only got the, the one return kill as well on the Tus, which isn't too impactful at all. No, wait, wait. They got Tusk on the slide, but lost the Invoke and Return, which is... Yeah, I mean, they got you... a double kill on the Ember, and they so... got... One kill for the Tusk. I mean, losing the Invokers could probably be considered bad versus a Silencer, but I don't think he really cares. Yeah, they're going to be dual laning mid for a while. They want to just guarantee some um, early CS for the Invoker. It's interesting, though, because the Silencer Queen of Pain dual lane right here. The Zenigata is only here just to null any aggression coming out from um, the Dazzle and the Invoker combo. But, you know, with you need to give Invoker these early levels. Like, they're only level 1 at 1 minute. Level 2 now, but that will be reserved for Invoke, so all he has is Cold Snap and that's it. Yeah, it's only level 1 as well. And looking around the map as well, we've just got... Uh, oh dear, ILTW right is now. getting the Kitchen's in thrown at him, but there's the Shadow... Not the Shadow Grave. The Wave keeping him alive. Shadow Wave. In fact, the speed of life will be taking a lot of damage here. There's a rotation from Giga. He wants ILTW. Shadow Grave is up. What can ILTW do? He has nothing to counteract this. He dies. And so will the Dazzle, most likely. Yep, Dazzle Snowball securing the kill. And that's already four intelligence up on the uh, Silencer. Yeah, he's not a dumb fella. Growing and it's funny because... That's four intelligence been taken from this invoker. He died All of it. He died bottom and he also died over here as well. This is... Well, no, it's four intelligence being stolen from the invoker and the dazzle. Oh, sorry, yeah. But... But it all adds up, my friend. Especially for a silencer, who wants all the intelligence he can get. Speaking of which... Just picked up an invis and this is a free kill in my opinion. Oh no, Jedrox is actually... Oh, okay, level 2 void. Two mangoes up on the Night Stalker, he just wants his base damage. There's a snowball in! Two people snowball it's in onto Muriel. The pop is one charges, there we go. He... Oh, there's the Shallow Grave in, he decides to go right back in on Giga. Will he be able to survive this? Yeah, they void is back up, up on 3 seconds. In 1 second. Ah, unfortunate. Then Senegard is coming up here, sees if he can get to the kill. Oh, here we go. Oh, they have... They have uh, no uh, Spirit Lance there, so... This is just going to be a little trade-off here of some, of some regen. Zenigata, he's had six tangos at the start, now he's down to one. Got at least level three, so he's probably going to look around. So he's going to run with the Tusk as well. Ember Spirit's getting a lot of good farm on the bot lane right now. Which is going to be really scary in the late game. Uh oh. Ah, Muriel's there's a free man snowballing. What is Mural doing so deep into the enemy jungle? I'm asking myself the same question right now. And the... No, there goes the Dazzle. He can ice, he can shallow grave himself, but. He's got a man up on the sciencer. He wants the he gets the sciencer. So he's not gonna lose any int here, but he will die. It's a two for one, it's okay. Not too bad at all. Dazzle just manned up there, which was probably the right play to do. Still loses technically loses, but it's so little that it can't even be considered a loss. 
And now the invoke is already level 5, as the Queen of Pain is level 4, so this guy knows how to catch up. I think it's because the invoke got the bounty rune. Another donation from Adin Stueldu. Thank yeah, we you. all we really appreciate all the donations coming in. Really, thank you. Charity tournament. It's for a good cause. And Muriel once again diving deep. In fact, he wants to go on Gedrox. Once decides to not go after Gedrox. <laughs> wants the curry instead, but that will cost him a bit of time. And in fact, he doesn't get any objectives there. Just manages to harass Gedrox out of the lane and force the creeps to Oh, look to at mid, look at mid. Oh, okay, he's got the Ghost Force up, so... Oh! oh. Queen of Blind Pain. Screen coming in. Clutch there, and Zenigarth just taking a couple tower bolts in the face, but he's up to eight intelligence already. Support, roaming silence, uh, new meta. Oh, here we go. we got the Russian name coming in here. Gonna trade some hits with him right now. He's still he's got manning up as well. Out. He's using the poison touch. At the speed it won't of life. Nah, it's poison touch, it's not shadow strike. Who is max poison touch in my opinion? I don't know. I thought nah, shadow went Nah, not really. You want one level in it just to harass out like the enemy off lane or like the enemy mid is usually pretty strong for that. Because of the move slow so you can right click them all the way back to the tower. But Shadow Wave and Shadow Grave really do take priority right now. But we've seen Pwn actually get a lot on the soft lane, like he's already level 6 by 6. Um, yeah. And as a slider, you can be pretty happy with that. And he's also 25 and 6 in CS. In fact, oh, is in a bit of trouble here. No 6 to help him out here, and he will fall. And in fact, the Cold Embrace was probably on its way. No, oh, he doesn't even level it yet. Down, mid. down on the mid lane. Let's have a look on the top lane actually. Man up on Zenigata, double damage on the Dazzle. Getting a kill on Zenigata, returning the returning the favor. In fact, they also get a kill on the PL. Not sure how that happened. Ah, boy, I guess. That's pretty significant. They get a kill on the Roaming Silencer, who has been ahead for quite a long time. And the PL, which has been sort of free farming, as you can see with the 31 and 7 CS. Sneaky Giga in the jungle, waiting for ILTW to show himself. Yeah, he really needs to be underneath the sentry ward range before they make it go. Just following him, scouting him out, waiting for the Queen of Pain to get into position. Yeah, they should have noticed that. <laughs> Immediately dewarded. Yeah, that's quite unfortunate right there. That's some that's some next level plays right there. Not really, but you know, hurt the economy, and you will eventually win. Well, I'm hoping that this Ember Spirit can really get online really quick. Okay, we have Pwn just going in real deep here, but the Fire Remnant out, and then we got oh dear, tornado up on mid lane. AMP is out as well, but one and all, Muriel is coming into support, Senegata might get a kill here before no. he falls, but he will definitely fall. I on the bot lane we had, literally three Damn heroes is committed down. right there for Pwn. He's forced a really big rotation around the map. Radiant Pretty good, because they got their Night nice Stalker as well. Watching bot while I was watching mid. I wonder which one of them was a better engagement, but we do know that Invoker you now died. Lots of pinks coming out there. That's a lot committed for the Invoker, but it is standard. And still, this they're leaving the PL to farm again. This is not, not as farm this game, but... Muriel could be in trouble right now, or he should pursue the here. Levels. There's a max level spirit lance. That would probably kill their nice stalker. Yeah, Muriel is Dead. not. I don't know why he returned. Oh no, he's got help from the dazzle. Even the armor up coming in as well. Shadow Grave as well to make sure that he does stay alive. But now they're going right back in on dazzle and Muriel gets healed up one last time. 
And why is he returning? He really wants this kill, but he's not going to be able to get it. Piel gets off with a double kill. 14 int on this silencer, man. Look at his mana pool for a roaming silencer. It's not even 10 minutes in yet. Radiance mid tower. Wow. Got a really dumb Night Stalker. He's only got, you know, 22 intelligence. Yeah, that's four attributes coming out from Magic Radiance Wand. Top towers hurting. Well, we're not really seeing the heads where our head start on the invoker, like as you would usually see. We'd we'd see the invoker lose out on CS early on, the Queen of Pain, but should pull it back just a little bit because of the strong nukes that he has and the Queen of Pain being quite strong. Oh dear! And here we go. Invoker yeah, once got again. Kind of in five seconds. Oh, really but he managed to get that. Phase. And but here comes the silencer rotation in to make sure that invoker survives. Yeah, they really need to babysit the Invoker, but mainly this Ember Spirit can win them the game solo right now. He has... he really does need to get a Battle Fury soon, though. He will look for the Boots of Travel first, so he can just push out, and then maybe after that he'll get a Drum if the Invoker is not getting one. Yeah, the getting... Invoker's probably going to get a Drum. He's getting really annoyed by, this, uh, by Pwn, though. Pwn only has died twice, and it has gotten a kill in return. On this offlane, he's a happy little slider. He's a very happy little slider. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, everyone. And we have the drum coming up on the PL, so he's going to be more fight orientated this game. And now, uh, well, that was weird. Double crush. Well, just complete whiffs up on down on the bottom lane. A speed of uh, life smoked up on uh, behind the tower. PL coming in also. They're committing. There's the global silence as well. They really are committing onto these two heroes here. Oh, got the ice dragon. The swanky. Oh. He has Colin Brace. He has Winter's Curse. He will use Winter's Curse. They really want to kill Speed of Life here. But he will still fall to the crush. And here comes Gedrox. As the PL. Yeah, forcing a lot of TPs in in now. They really need to bring this nice down. Has his bots. And has his bots, but they, those won't help in this next fight. Uh, he doesn't even have Slate of Fists yet. And Queen of Pain actually picking up the Night Stalk on the back lines. Yeah, it pops the DD. This is a kill, isn't it? Hey, that's what you do with the DD, isn't it? That's what it's for. And Pwn getting a good stun off on ILTW. Invoker uses the MP. Will he get Pwn? Pwn will be got here. No mana to, to use anything anymore. The anti armor is on him as well. Chase coming in from the Ember. That's three, four people. They really have to get the skill. This is what you. This is what happens when you don't have a level in Slater Fist. And ILTW can. What's again going in here? Shadow Grave is up on him, but he will tick out to this uh, Queen of Pain most likely. Yep, Queen of Pain, killing the Invoker off. Very aggressive. Incredibly aggressive Invoker. Oh, sorry about that, I had to sneeze, but we're back. That was a bit... Um, I mean, just the Invoker walking in there thinking he could one-on-three them was interesting. I mean, yes, as a late-game Invoker, I can one-on-three people, but... No. Uh, this Invoker has given away uh, a few too many deaths. He's one in five right now, and his level has been really impacted because of it, because looking at it, the Dazzle is the same level as your mid-Invoker. Like, that's really bad. That should never happen. And the Roman Silence is only one level behind. Oh, here we go now. And the Tornado going through, and nothing else. See, the Tornado isn't doing enough damage as well. It's... No, not at all. The Wex is what gives it the damage, but he actually has a lot of levels in the Wex right now. But he needs to level up the Quaz so he can just balance out the lift timing so he can actually hit the EMP. Because why do they want to commit a cooldown like Winter's Curse just to hit an EMP? This really... Like, I'm not sure about the Invoker's build. Because usually, personally, when I play Invoker, I like to skip the level of Exhort until at least level 12, 11. Because the damage coming out from Cold Snap and Tornado EMP is unreal. And Pwn is missing the crush on bottom. Oh, but there's a four-man rotation into bottom. They want, they want this Ember dead, and they're going to use the Global Science as well. Ember will fall here, and so will Swanky. 
And TBE are taking the game for themselves here. Yeah, they're just running over them right now. They've got the early aggression and Ember Spirit and Invoker, they want to be passive for the first 20 minutes. They want to get their fun, they want to get their levels. But TBE, they're just putting on the pressure right now. And they are finding kills around the map. They've killed the Invoker a couple of times. And that's two deaths now on the Ember. That should be happening, man. Especially when he's got his ultimate, but committing the global silence just to kill the Ember is so valuable right now. Things like they've negated the Invoker completely. They, it's, it's that's the that's the beauty of it. The Invoker is no longer a threat for them, and this is really what's going wrong for Enter right now. I mean, of course, EMP is annoying and all, but if they're as a team and they can dodge the EMP, they can dodge the tornado for the most part. They're fine. Because what does the Invoker do after that? He doesn't have the abilities, he doesn't have the levels, he doesn't have the damage to do much. We've seen uh, Jedrox now, he's played two PL games in a row, and we could just see his flexibility right now, that he's just changing up his item build, just to suit the game. And got the Once again, a TP on top, right with a team fight going in, Giga is dead. Alongside the Dazzle. Oh, Alongside... Oh, died! Oh, no! 0.1 second left on his TP, and that's another three kills going their way. And have a look at the fight recap, my friend, and Jesus Christ. That's a 2,000 gold swing for TBE, more or less. Yeah. 2,000 oh, XP God. as well. That is... It's, it's pretty broken, actually. This Very is... broken indeed. This is 10,000. This is 10,000 gold swing. Like, 10,000 net worth. For TBE, 10,000, yeah. well, 7.5k down to 10k XP. They are currently in a very, very secure lead. Let's see what happens because, I mean, you know, looking at the net worth right now, the Dyer are just running away. I mean, really, the questions that now arise is what can Enzo do to win this back? They need I'm to find pick offs and find objectives. They need to. You obviously smoke before this. And Probably not have, have stuff on, like uh, that happening. Again. And Voker's gonna fall once again. Oh no, the Shadow Grape will keep him alive for just a second longer, but he's already yes. got the DOTs on him. And now being followed up by Gedrox. The Invoker will also get Gold Embraced, but Spirit Lance goes through that. Dazzle will be the next to fall. The insane damage coming out. Ur has to just remnant away, but cannot. He's stuck by the Yules. And will fall. I'd be Four, having a GT out right now if I was Enzo, because your your sort of early game ganking lineup uh, is failed. And what is really disappointing me this game is this nice talker. He's sat on top and he hasn't TP once anywhere. Got his levels. He's got level eight, level nine right now, and he's one in five. To be fair, he's given away a couple kills on top. He hasn't had much support coming in from the, from the Dazzle, like he's had one or two times the Dazzle's came in, Shadow Grey, but they haven't capitalised on that advantage. And because of that, I think they've lost the game, because this Night Stalker's been very passive, very static. Yeah, and already you can see it here, Winter's Curse is out though, on Pwn, not doing much in T-I-L-2-T-W. He's getting chased down by the Queen of Blade, blinking and really aggressively. They know she's there, she's about to blink out once again. Poison Touch is not leveled enough to get to prevent that. In fact, they have no stuns that would have prevented that in any case. All of them. That They're diving at 18 off. minutes. And oh, look at this Pwn getting a random pick off onto the Dazzle. In fact, no, Tusk does fall, does run away with that one. And now Muriel in the back lines gets stunned up by the. By the <laughs> stunned up. Get silenced. This, I'm sorry, I'm losing, I'm losing my words here. Yeah, this, this is just is too much. Yeah, and they GG out. 20 minute game. TBE win this. And remember, this is a double elimination, so they do win the first round. Enzo will fall down to the losers brackets. TBE continues on. Let's just see how they will fare. And that was this for that was it for today. Please follow us again for tomorrow. I will not be casting. It will be my good old friend Sander. Who will be casting that game. Um I'm unsure about which teams are playing right now. Uh will which will be playing tomorrow. But I do believe there will be some very exciting matches. We do have some very exciting matches coming up. 
please follow, subscribe if you do wish. And also please donate, this is all for a good cause. Once again, this has been Morality Clause and at Zach Owen. We have been your casters for tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out, boys.